Doug Green, and I'm the publisher of Telecom Reseller. And today I'm with Jim Terrell, who's the Senior Director, Product Marketing for Transaction Network Services, TNS. Jim, thank you for joining me today. Doug, great to be on the uh, call today. Well, this is a very exciting podcast. We're going to be updating our listeners and uh, readers on a huge issue that impacts just about everybody. In fact, I think it impacts everybody, robocalls. And so from whatever point of view uh, you have and whatever the experience is, maybe just as an end user or as a carrier, um, we're going we're gonna to find out what's happening. So, Jim, before we get into, uh, into that, can you just tell us a little bit about TNS or Transaction Network Services? Yeah, so TNS uh, provides routing solutions. Uh, and with that, uh, to get to some of the larger carriers and, and, and across about 400 different carriers, with that, we are then able to see, you know, billions of calls every single day that allows us to provide robocall detection solutions, um, you know, to to well over uh, 100 customers. So how is TNS helping combat robocall volume? Yeah, so we provide, TNS provides a call management platform to the top wireless and, and MSO voice providers in the U.S., as well as 100 uh, smaller carriers that help prevent or warn subscribers on unwanted robocalls. Uh, we're also working um, to help provide branded calling that will help uh, restore trust in voice. And we can talk a little bit about uh, branded calling in a little bit. Uh, the other thing that we do is, um, you know, through our robocall investigation report, we provide thought leadership. We share the data that we actually see with the industry. Um, that's actually helped the FCC with, you know, some of their uh, some of their proposed rulemaking as well. Uh, and, and and again, um, you know, that's over, you know, the billions of call events that we see, you know, every single day. So we we, we try to help out um, in a variety of um, of methods. So as the as the case for so many complex challenges, data is is playing a big part in potentially helping thwart robocall efforts. What is the data telling us right now when it comes to robocall tactics and trends? Yeah, so I think you you, you mentioned this earlier, Doug. It, it really hasn't stopped or abated the the problem. We've seen you know about 79 billion robocalls in, in 2021. Wow. That's up slightly from from 77 billion from from the year before uh, you know so obviously it's, it's still a problem you know with the trace act uh, that was unanimously voted on to, ha- to help the FCC you know combat the problem it's not a red red state or blue state issue it's a everybody issue hmm. and so what our data shows is that you know 68 percent of the unwanted calls you know originate on on VoIP networks last year uh, you know which led which leads, you know, kind of where we see, you know, the call origination category, where most of the calls um, come from. And, and, and we've also seen their, their, them switching their tactics up due to, uh, you know, the implementation on tier one carriers. So, you know, more than, you know, 56% of the calls that we've seen have had, uh, that have implemented stir shaking across the tier one wireless network, um, which is great because that's up from, from 35% from, from the, from the previous year. So that kind of data then helps us, you know, better make better decisions. Stir shaking certainly uh, certainly is not the answer, but it's another it's another input in, in, into the signaling that will allow, allow our algorithm to, you know, understand whether this is a wanted or unwanted call. You know, some of the kind of the other things that I think that we've seen too as well, and, and this gets into the whole, you know, stir shaking kind of problem, if you will, in that bad actor, we've seen bad actors uh, uh, legitimately purchase telephone numbers from from VoIP providers to get around stir shaking, stir shaking. They'll spread uh, a small amount of calls over hundreds of thousands of, of telephone numbers. So stir shaking really wouldn't help in that particular instance in that um, it's, it, it becomes a know your customer or KYC problem for, for those carriers. We're also seeing, um, you know, bad actors, you know, spoofing wireline networks with really ultra low volume spoofing, um, where stir shaking may have not been implemented. So, I mean, it's almost kind of interesting in that, you know, we've got our data science team that's trying to figure out what they're doing. I would almost say that, you know, 
it sounds like the or it feels like the the bad actors have their own data science team that are that are trying to figure out okay what are the data science teams from the analytics engines trying to do to um, you know thwart the thwart the efforts that we're doing. So to go one step further, how is TNS helping carriers leverage advanced data analytics, AI, and machine learning to address robocall challenge? Yeah, so like I said before, we share the trends with the carriers on a regular basis, um, and then we have dialogues with them on, you know, is there data that we that we can use to, to help them in the tracebacks? The U.S. Telecom will do tracebacks and, and then determine where the original uh, original traffic came into the U.S. Uh, you've seen some uh, some of the FCC write cease and desist letters to some of those carriers. And hopefully that's kind of helped with some of the more uh, some of the more egregious uh, fraudulent type calls that go in there. But like I said before, we have a we have a massive amount of data in real time signaling that, that helps us do that. We feed that into uh, our mo major, uh, modern data science and our machine learning uh, ops operations processes uh, that have rapid response capabilities. And 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 we try to frequent new algorithm releases. Um, because we do know that the bad actors are changing on a frequent basis, so we have to, you know, continue to update our models, um, you know, much more frequently when, than we have in the past. It was a little bit static, probably, you know, in, in prior years, but we're certainly, you know, gearing that up. And then uh, the other thing I think that, that makes us unique again is, is we share our metrics with our carriers, and, and we take a, a data-driven approach to uh, performance measurement and, and continuous improvement. Um, and, and get their input into, you know, uh, what we should be doing next. So how is this analysis helping carriers identify the constantly changing identities of robocallers, as well as rapidly shifting tactics and numbers used and other trends such as neighbor spoofing and snowshoe spamming? Right, yeah. So so with snowshoe spamming, um, that that's, again, just spreading – uh, the calls out, you know, small amount of calls out over, you know, a large set of uh, telephone numbers, and and so, you know, we've seen some some you know VoIP providers. We've talked to you know a couple of them. One one uh, actually had a a know your customer issue. They've taken care of that, and we don't see uh, them you know necessarily generating you know their, or, or traffic not being generated using their telephone number resources. So that's a so that's a good thing. Um, again, we're adapting our algorithms to, to, to get to these trends and, you know, and, and help tr try to identify, you know, what, what the uh, wanted, uh, what the wanted traffic is from the unwanted traffic. Sometimes, you know, it's just as important um, for us to identify an unwanted calls as, as well as to, you know, keep our false, uh, false positives uh, at, an, at, at, a, at an industry leading low as well. Um, you want those calls, you know, those school alerts, for example, to go through the doctor's offices, the hospitals, et cetera. You know, even even you know, when I think about in the earlier days of COVID, you know, COVID COVID tracing and and COVID test kits and and that sort of thing. So to try to you know uh, separate the legitimate from the illegitimate is is, is key to uh, to what we're doing. That's a that must be a really difficult thing though. Oh yeah, it absolutely it absolutely is. Um, you know, it's interesting if you look at you know some of the crowdsource feedback that we get from from uh, you know from our subscribers that we provide services to. Um, you know, some of them really can't tell the difference between you know a fake you know a fake COVID versus a real COVID. And sometimes it's hard for for us to, to as well. But that's why we we build out um, you know large large training data sets uh, with our data scientists. We put a human effort back into it, just not, you know, 100% machine learning. Learn the ground truth. Once we determine that, then, you know, we, we feed that back into the algorithm to uh, uh, to, trade, to, to train it so it can help better detect between, uh, you know, what's legal and what may be illegal. Um, but yeah, it, 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 is, it is a tough, it is a tough thing, but you know, the more signals that we get into our system, um, you know, the better we are at detecting it. How is deploying stir shaken impacted robocall data? 
Yeah, so I would say it really hasn't had that much of an impact as noted by the numbers that I shared before. Um, it does need to be more widely deployed. Uh, we're starting to, we, we think we're starting to see a little bit of a trend in it declining. We saw a, a drop off from October to November, November to December, and, and December to January kind of stayed stayed a little bit flat. So that's encouraging. Um, the carriers are getting kind of with stir shaken, uh, even though it may be you know legitimate traffic or or you know it, that it was attested to as legitimate traffic. Um, stir shaking gives you that fingerprint, if you will, that allows you to go back and figure out okay who signed for the call, where did this call originate. So it makes the trace back a little bit easier, and, and the carriers are getting more aggressive uh, in, in using those using those trace backs and, and implementing the logic with with Surf Shaken. Uh, you know, in addition, um, the FCC created a, a robocall mitigation database that's, that, that, that everybody that delivers traffic to the U.S. Uh, so that includes obviously all the U.S. carriers as well as foreign foreign carriers that deliver traffic to the U.S. Um, that they had to uh, uh, say how they whether they had implemented Surf Shaken or not. And if they hadn't implemented stir shaken or were in the process of uh, implementing stir shaken, they had to put together here's what my robocall mitigation plan is. So, um, you know, with that now it, it gives a little bit more of a hammer to the to the FCC to uh, to be able to go back and say, okay, now that we've done some of these tracebacks, did you have stir shaken in place? If you didn't, then we're going to force you to put uh, stir shaken more in uh, or put it in place with your network. Um, we also now will have the ability to look at your robocall mitigation plan. Maybe it wasn't as robust as it should have been. Um, so, you know, those things I think are going to continue to help and, and why we think that, that, you know, we'll start to see some, some, some relief. Um, one of the other things that, that, that the FCC did based on our data uh, is that they uh, moved up the timeline for smaller providers. Uh, they were given a two-year extension. Uh, those that are non-facilities based have to implement stir shaking now um, by June of this year before they it was only uh, or they gave them two years to be able to do it in 2023. So, um, you know, we see that as positive. We also see the state AGs getting a little bit more aggressive with with the prosecution. And again, stir shaking kind of helps them, um, you know, with, you know, with that data to be able to do those tracebacks, identify where the bad actor traffic is originating. So how does that factor into broader efforts when and uh, when and when can consumers and businesses expect to see tangible results from all of these efforts in the form of yeah. robocalls? Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll begin to see uh, you know probably the next uptick or you know next downtick if you will in the amount of robocalls by June. Um, the uh, the FCC re recently, like I said, just pushed forward the non facilities based. Um, uh, to mitigate scam calls, it's a critical step. Um, and, and, and you know what our data also found is that five percent of the high-risk calls actually originate on a tier one network. So that I think that'll help a lot. Uh, I think with um, the things that we're doing with 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 some of our larger carriers around branded calling, where we'll deliver the logo, we'll deliver the call uh, context on a call that's been verified that it's actually coming from that subscriber. That'll help. Uh, the subscriber get, gain a little bit more trust that you talked about. Um, you know that there's distrust in the in the telephone system today uh, in in answering those types of calls. So I think both from a robocall mitigation standpoint and branded calling, those th that should help improve the ecosystem. Uh, you know throughout 2022 and 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 into 2023. I, you know if the, if there's a way though, I think that um, I, I think the bad actors will will again try you know try to uh, abuse the system as much as they can, uh, but we just need to make it harder for where they can, uh, you know, pop their pop their, uh, pop their heads up into a hole. It's kind of like a game of whack-a-mole, if you will, um, you know, and just making it harder and harder for them to, uh, to be successful. Unfortunately, they've, they've made a lot of money on, on fraud and uh, we, it, it, if we make it, you know, much, that much harder and, uh, less likely for them to, to, to gain money from it, then you know, hopefully it just shuts down itself. So, do you are you predicting that we're going to start really seeing some some progress here? 
I think we will. Uh, I think we'll see some 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 other shifts as well. I think the bad actors will continue to adapt. Um, I think we've seen an increase in the amount of uh, in, of robo texting. We've seen you know probably over a hundred percent increase in in robo robo text complaints um, from the FCC. And, and and again, you know, why is that going to accelerate in 2022? Uh, it's difficult for carriers to determine. Um, if, if the recently uh, greenlit, which is uh, greenlit uh, 10, uh, 10 digit long code, uh, robo texts are legitimate or not. And again, um, you know, the way that they, the way they did that with, with, you know, the short messaging codes was a little bit easier in that there was a registry. There's a registry with 10 digit codes as, too, as well, but they really don't notice um, unless there's a large volume of calls. So if, if bad actors are, are, Strong on, you know, using kind of those same techniques on the voice call with snowshoe spamming, you know, trying to avoid detection from the analytics engines. Uh, then it'll be then it'll be you know a little bit more difficult for for the for the carriers to do that. But again, uh, the FCC is looking into you know should we apply the same types of logic and stir shake into robotex as we do with with robocalling. So yeah, I think. I, I think um, you know, I think we'll see an improvement. I don't think it'll 100% go away. Um, you know, just like you know, email scams and and you know, phishing scams via email really haven't abated, even though you know their programs have been in place probably for well over well over 20 years. But you still see them still see them coming in. So I guess you know. Bottom line is, is if, if if there's a way to make money, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think people are gonna, you know, are, are gonna, uh, you know, try to exploit that. It would be great if they tried to use all that technology for good rather than bad. So, are these really sort of your wider predictions for the coming year? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, I think you know we'll also, I think election-related calls will will, will test uh, the consumer's patience as well. You know, if you've made a uh, if you've made a donation via text, whether it be only five or ten dollars, you know, you've now given you know you've now given permission for that entity to uh, to contact you via via text. So, um, you know, we've seen a large amount of robocalls on in 2020. You know, we're starting to see uh, you know those political robocalls continue. Um, uh, into 2021 and 2022, so uh, you know I think that's going to be I think that's going to be going to be a challenge as well. So um, you know, and we've also seen some data where uh, you know Americans believed robocalls and, and robotexts were uh, used to undermine the confidence of, of the 2020 election. So you know whether it was you know whether it was real or not, that you know perception becomes reality where. You know, over 54% of them believe that. That's really a, an astounding number, and I really hadn't heard about that. Yeah, we did a uh, we did a we did a recent study that 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 um, that said that you know one you know, that that from July to October of that year um, of, of last year we saw robocalls, calls approximately about one tenth of the total unwanted call volume. Um, and, and, and again, uh, you know, again, those are, you know, sometimes tough to tell whether it's, you know, just an, just an annoyance, nuisance type calls, you know, reminding you of, of, you know, who the election, you know, who you want to vote for and, and get, you know, political surveys uh, and that sort of thing versus, uh, you know, uh, you know, total, total, uh, you know, total fraudulent telling you to, you know, go to the wrong voting place, et cetera, versus, uh, you know, Versus, you know, ones that would be a little bit, uh, would be a little bit more, um, uh, you know, fraudulent in nature, if you will, trying to deceive the public. So, Jim, you know, what I guess I'm hearing, and we, we sort of look a little further down the road uh, for the year, you know, uh, we're going to probably move into possibly a new normal. We can see maybe the, um, you know, the pandemic sort of, uh, many of the most severe parts of it may be winding down. Maybe uh, we have new work habits and so on, and this all goes into how we communicate. When we look down the road, a year, two, three years down the road, it sounds to me like what you're saying is robocalling won't be completely eradicated as maybe we once hoped, 
but it'll be like we we do use email a lot and you know we've found ways to basically put in the junk folder the the emails that we don't want yeah i think that's a i think that's a great analogy doug um and 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 i think that i think that's where we'll be i think that's where we'll be at you know i think hopefully we'll have stopped the majority of the you know the really truly uh fraudulent uh robo calls and and then we'll just be down to what we would consider kind of the more of the nuisance ones where um you, you might be receiving calls from an overly aggressive marketer but they're actually not really trying to defraud you uh you know because as we've learned from some of the crowdsource feedback that we've looked at you know uh you know spam is you know spam is is somewhat relative so you know if you've got a, an overly aggressive marketer for example one person um, you know, might think that, oh, that's great. You reminded me that my subscription was up and, and I needed to uh, take an action on it where, you know, the other person may, may view that as, well, I find that completely annoying. I knew that it was up and there's a reason that I'm not renewing my subscription because you know, I, I no longer want your services. So um, I, think that's, I think that's where we'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, hopefully a movement to in the next one, two, three years is, you know, now now we'll be you know we'll we'll have less less fraudulent and and it'll it'll you know probably be more into the nuisance bucket if you will if that makes sense. And uh, you know I want to bring your company back into this. Uh, how are T how is TNS helping your partners and your customers deal with this uh, basically emerging situation now? Yeah, so like I said before, um, you know we pro we do provide a call management platform to. You know, over a hundred carriers that 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 help help them identify unwanted calls to subscribers, and and we're starting to work with some of the larger carriers on on branded calling uh, campaigns that'll you know help re restore the trust in, in in the voice ecosystem. You know, with delivering, you know, here's you know, I've verified that I've verified the caller is who they say they are. Start shaking can help with that. Uh, as well as you know now being able to deliver the the logo and in, in the call intent so um, you know I, I think I, I think it'll be an exciting year as we kind of see a shift from from unwanted to hey I really wanted to receive that call and and you know thanks for thanks for putting that that out there and and, and again uh, you know I you know I think the I think the the voice ecosystem if you will has been so abused over the last few years it'll be interesting to kind of see the shift back to you know more of a trusted uh a trusted mechanism for uh for the subscribers of, of of the larger carriers and smaller carriers as well well it sounds like we have a little bit of hope that uh, some of these a lot of this hard work and it has been hard work a lot of effort with a lot of people is going to start to pay off and provide a safer and better experience yeah, it's truly been a um, an industry-wide collaboration, which has been exciting. The carriers have been, you know, extremely uh, extremely helpful. You know, the, the lawmaking from the FCC to the state attorney generals to you know the working groups within uh, you know Addis and, and and others as well has been it's been extremely um, it's been extremely good to see that that you know if there's bad out there that that people can come together and and try to make it good. Well, with that, Jim, I want to thank you for joining me today and uh, really giving us a big update on this important issue. Where can we learn more about TNS? Yes, yeah, so you can go to uh, www.tnsi.com. If you uh, search on our scam of the month, it'll give you tools on here's some of the latest trends that, that we're seeing, um, and just you know arm yourself to be uh, to be prepared to. Uh, uh, you know, to try to learn, um, you know, what's fake versus uh, versus what real, what's real. The, the bad actors are really good at, at trying to use topical events, if you will, to uh, to try to try to confuse the consumer and and defraud them. So, the more you can learn about it, the better. All right. Well, with that, we're going to be looking forward to the next update on this, and hopefully, there'll be a good progress report. But for now, Jim, thank you very much for joining me today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Doug.